Hi, this is Gay Pope Payton, and I'm here with my blog number 14. And I think I'm going to entitle this blog Intimidation and the Successful Woman. I did um, a PSA about this on my personal Facebook page and on my fan page. It was really popular. It's been shared lots of times and it's gotten almost 300 likes. So it's a, it's a, it's a popular, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not in the, up there yet with people who are getting a million likes on their, um, on their statuses. But, you know, for me, 300 likes is a lot. And, you know, a lot of people have shared this PSA because, I mean, it hits home for a lot of people because there are more successful women these days than than there were in the past um, because women are having to fend for themselves they're having to get things for themselves because they can't really wait for somebody to bring it to them it's like I got to get it for myself I got to take care of my children on my own I got to do this so I'm gonna do it the best way I know how and um, I'm gonna get my education I'm gonna do what I have to do and so um you know, the, that's where the intimidation factor comes in sometimes with women who make their own money. Because um, even though I don't, I know that all men don't think this way. I know that a lot of men associate money with power, and so when a woman makes her own money, you know, sometimes a man will feel powerless um, and and feel like he has nothing to offer her. And I am here to say that that is complete and total nonsense you have everything to offer a woman who makes her own money because even a woman who makes her own money cannot make her own man. So if you are a man, you have being a man to offer to a woman who does not have one. So don't ever feel like you don't have anything to offer a woman just because she makes her own money. Don't let the symbol of money stop you from being the man that you could be to a very good woman who just very well may have her own stuff. Um... Okay, I was talking to one of my male friends the other night and he told me that my problem is, I mean, we were talking about the tragedy that is my love life. And he told me that my problem is that I intimidate men. And I think the problem with that is that I don't see that as my problem. I, if somebody is intimidated by me, I see that as their problem, not my problem because the way someone else feels and the way someone is impacted by my presence or the way someone feels about me or someone reacts to me, I can't control that. I can't control. Somebody might not like the way I wear my hair. They may not like my earrings. They might not. I have no control over the way somebody reacts to me. There may be some racist people around who may react to the color of my skin. I don't have any control over the way that people react to me. And therefore, I don't think that I have any control over someone who may feel intimidated by me. Now... I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself so that you'll understand why he would have said that to me. Um, because you like, you know, I, most people will see me. If you don't know me, you will say, you know, oh, there's, there's a black girl. She's real cute. She's tall. You know, blah. Oh, look at her long legs. You know, blah, blah. But other than that, I'm just a girl. And, and if you don't see me in the context of my life in my hometown, then you will see me the way that I like to be seen, which is just a woman. A woman. I'm just a girl. But in the context of my life, in my town where I live, <clears throat> my, um, my, um, where I am in my career is, is, you know, is why he would say something like that to me. I have, um, I have three degrees. I have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree in business, both in business, a master's degree in business, a bachelor's degree in business. And then I have a Juris Doctor, which is a law degree. And then I'm a sworn judge in my district. I'm a licensed attorney. I've been practicing law for 18 years. I'm a lot older <laughs> than I look. And, um, and I, um, you know, I sing all over the place. I'm like the resident national anthem singer around here. And there's really no cute way to put this. Um, in my book, I, I talk about this in the introduction to my general PSAs. I talk about the phrase called race ipsa loquitur that I learned in law school, meaning that the thing speaks for itself. But what I like to call it is what we call it in my hood. It is what it is. So um, this is my book, and you can pick this up at any, um, any online store that sells books. You can get it at Amazon. You can get it at, um, for your Nook at BarnesandNoble.com. You can get it for your Kindle at Amazon. You can download it for your iPad. I mean, you can get it anywhere. And you can order it. You can go to the Teardrops Publications website and you can order it. You can pay for it with PayPal and, and it'll be shipped to you. Or if you want to, you can email me at this has been a public service announcement at Comcast.net, C-O-M-C-A-S-T, Comcast.net. 
And um, if you email me at that email address, then I will sign your copy and I will mail it to you. So um, there are several ways you can get my book. And I think you'll really enjoy it because I'm kind of animated, you know, and I when I write, I write the same way that I speak. It's like I'm, I'm conversation style. So it's like you'll enjoy it. It's like you're having a conversation with me and I think you'll really like it. Most people who've read my book really like my book. Even men like it and there are chapters in my book where I kind of go in on men um, and, and even men like my book. So I think that it'll be enjoyable to all audiences. It's not a tell all on relationships. I'm not a relationship guru. How can I be a relationship guru? I don't even have a man. So it's just, um, it's my perspective on different concepts as it relates to life in general. Um, and it has seven categories, general PSAs, PSAs on relationships for men, for women, um, fitness PSAs, religious PSAs, and single parenting PSAs because I am a single parent. So um, it's just, you know, I think it's just, it'll be an enjoyable read. It's something that everybody, it has something in it for everybody. And I mean, it's just like, men have men have enjoyed it i've gotten a lot of feedback from men even older women even women who aren't dating anymore married women who've been married 40 years they read the book they're like i loved it i enjoyed it i enjoyed your testimonies you know about your son and my son is a cancer survivor i talked about that a little bit and and our journey with that so it's just a it's a good book it's just a good book to read and i think you'll enjoy it um so pick it up whenever you get a chance but what i was talking about when i was saying it is what it is I get off on tangents and then I start talking about something completely different, but I'm going back this time. Um, um, when I, I'm the national anthem singer around here, it's like the reason that people like the way I sing the national anthem is because it's like whether you black or white, you're going to love the way I sing the national anthem because the national anthem is a naturally beautiful song. It has natural rises and falls, so you don't have to you know, do all that running and riffing to make it a beautiful song. And so white people like the way I sing the national anthem, honestly, because I don't butcher it. I just sing the national anthem. I mean, you know, I give the rockets red glare, everything I got. I give the land of the free, everything I got. And I just, I just sing the song. I let the song be the beautiful song that it is without butchering it. But because I have a natural vibrato to my voice when I sing, Black people can tell that it's a black woman singing the song when they hear it. So it's like, so it's whether it's a black function, whether I'm singing for Juneteenth or, um, um, you know, a, a, a black holiday that we're having, Martin Luther King celebration, whatever I'm singing for, whether I'm singing at a basketball game, I sang last weekend at the rodeo. So wherever I sing the national anthem, people enjoy me singing the national anthem because of the fact that I give what I have to give to it without taking from the natural integrity of the song. So, anyway, so some people know me from that. Some people know me from um, from my other jobs. I sit on several boards. I'm an author. I just wrote a book. I told you about that just a few minutes ago. So a lot of people know me for the things that I have done. And because of that, um, <clears throat> you know, I think that's where he got the concept that men are intimidated by me. And then people take my book sometimes and they pick out parts of my book. You know, it's like how sometimes people who are religious, um, and I, I use the term religious instead of saying some people who have a relationship with God, because some people who are religious don't have a real relationship with God. So um, people who are religious will take the Bible out of context. And I don't appreciate that at all, because the, the Bible, the Constitution, they are holistic documents and you have to take them in their entirety. You have to, you know, receive the entire document. You cannot pick out the scriptures that make you look more holy. You cannot pick out the um, parts of the Constitution that lines up with your political beliefs. You have to take those documents in their entirety or not at all. And so that's how I would like to, for people to view my book. It's a holistic document. I want people to understand that I am a person. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want you to look at it from the concept that I am a woman, <clears throat> a woman who is single and bitter and mean and blah, 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 and tearing me down. I'm not, that's not my goal. I'm not a bitter or a mean woman. I am an informed woman. So I don't file for the okie doke. So you running game on me is a waste of your time. And I make that very clear. And I give women tools so that they will recognize game. And, um, and I give men tools so that they won't play games. You know, it's just like when the rubber hits the road, you want to have a meaningful relationship. And if you want to have a meaningful relationship with someone, you don't want to start off with dishonesty and deception. And so that's what my book is about. It's talking about how to have good relationships, whether it's a good relationship 
with your body in, in, in regards to fitness, a good relationship with God in regards to religion, a good relationship with a man in regard if you're a woman, a good relationship with a woman if you are a man, and a good relationship with other people if you're just, just as you relate to people. And then as a single parent, having a better relationship with your children and having a better relationship with that absent parent who may or may not be someone that you want in your child's life. So that's what my book is about. It's a holistic document that talks about those kinds of things. So anyway, let me get back to what I was talking about. I said all that to let you know why my friend would think that men might be intimidated by me because of the things that I have going on. I just have so much going on. I literally have five jobs and it's, um, you know, and it, it can be overwhelming. And, and for that reason, I am no nonsense. I'm very, very no nonsense. I don't have time to figure out where I fit in your life. I, I just don't have time for that. Either you make room for me in your life or I won't be in your life. I mean, I have to, you know, I just, I just don't believe in that. I don't play the musical chairs dating game. I'm not going to play the musical chairs dating game where I'm walking around in circles with other women in your dating rotation and hoping that I have a chair to sit down in when you finally decide to turn the music off. I'm not going to do it. I don't have time for it. I have a peaceful existence by myself and I'm not going to disrupt my peace just so I can have a piece of a man. It's not going down like that. So I think that that coupled with my little accolades that I have may, you know, give me the appearance that I may be intimidating to them. This is how I feel about my accolades. When I die, when I draw my last breath, my accolades won't mean anything to me or anyone else. Nobody will be able to use my law degree. Nobody will be able to use my bachelor's or my master's degree. Nobody will be able to use my license to practice law. In, in the states, the, the courts in the state of Mississippi or in the United States Supreme Court. Nobody will be able to use any of that once I draw my last breath. Without my birth certificate, without my driver's license, without my social security card, those documents mean absolutely nothing. So when I die, those documents mean absolutely nothing. So because I cannot take those things with me when I die, I don't bring those things into my personal life. I let my personal life stand on its own. And so when I come home from work, if I have a man, when I come home from work, I don't want to be who I am. I want a man who's going to let me take off my judge's robe, going to let me take off my seersucker or hound tooth, hound's tooth suit, let me take off my five-inch peep toe pumps. I want him to be let me just be a woman. I don't want to have on my aerobics gear and be teaching an aerobics class. I don't want to be singing the national anthem and put my microphone down, put my author's pen down, and I'm just going to be there with my man. And that's all I want. I want what every other heterosexual woman wants. It's to be loved by a man who loves me <clears throat> and only me because I don't I don't get down like that. I don't, you know, it's like I'm I'm on I'm the only one or I'm no one. And, you know, it's like, it don't matter to me which one men choose because, you know, they just need to understand that before they even step to me. I'm the only one or I'm no one. And I'm, I don't, that's not negotiable. I don't sit second chair. I don't sit any chair. I sit only chair or I don't sit. Um, <clears throat> but back to the intimidation factor. I have a lot of respect for authority. Um, my pastor went to college with me. But I still can't call him by his first name. I still call him Pastor Kathy. I have to call him Pastor Kathy. It's just like, it's a respect thing for me. And when I get pulled over by the police, I'm not trying to manipulate the officer into not giving me a ticket. I am respecting his authority that he has as an enforcer of the law. Um, when I go before, I went to court this morning, I had a chancery court matter. I respect the chancery judges. I respect the circuit court judges. I respect the court of appeals judges, the Supreme Court justices. I respect them because I have a, just an innate respect for authority. Just like I respect older people, grown-ups, you know, it's like people who could be the same age as my parents. It's like, I have to say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to them. And they say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to me because of my position and it's just like it feels wrong to me for me to say it but I understand where they come from because I have the same respect for people in authority in my life but having respect for authority and giving credit where credit is due is one thing but I am not intimidated by one person who walks on this planet earth with me 
I'm not intimidated. I don't do intimidation because your status, your education, your credentials have nothing whatsoever to do with me. They don't change who I am. They change who you are, but they don't change who I am. And so, you know, the intimidation factor is something that I just can't relate to. God is, is not the author of confusion. And he does not give me the spirit of fear. So I'm not confused about the fact that I don't have anything to fear because my God rules. He reigns and he's the only one who reigns. And so you can't intimidate me by who you are and what power and authority that you have because my God reigns. It's just, and you just have to re realize that and give God that kind of authority in your life and you will walk in his authority. <clears throat> so when somebody tells me that a man is intimidated by me, I can't receive that because the man that God is keeping from me is going to be a man of God. And since God does not give us the spirit of fear, then the man who is for me is going to walk to me. He's going to walk toward me in God's authority and he's going to claim me. And then he's going to know how to lovingly harness the strengths that I have to undergird him as he leads, loves, and protects and provides for me as we go through life together. The intimidation factor has no place in human relationships. If you respect somebody, respect somebody. We're supposed to respect each other and we're supposed to respect God. But intimidation should have no place in a human relationship, especially a relationship between a man and a woman. <clears throat> this is the way I see it. Men have a tendency, and women do this sometimes too, to relate money with power. That's why you hear of people who were millionaires and they lose all their fortune some kind of way and then they end up committing suicide because they cannot handle the fact that they've lost everything because that was their power that's where their power came from was their money source whatever their money source was so they didn't want to live anymore because of the fact that they felt like they lost their power source so they lost everything but as long as I have God I have never lost everything I still have him and I'm and he can restore me to where I was before I lost all of the earthly things that I may have had before and if a man who understands that comes to me, then he will understand that I don't have anything to take from him. And he will understand as he gets to know me better that I understand my role as a woman. I understand my role as a help me to a man who becomes my husband. I understand that he is my spiritual and physical head and I will respect him and his authority in that capacity. I have no problem with submission. As a matter of fact, um, I even had this conversation with um, somebody that I used to date. And he told me, and I asked him, I said, did I have a problem submitting to your authority? Did I have a problem, you know, being submissive when we were, when we were dating? And he told me, he said, no. He said, you never had a problem stepping up. Uh, no, he said, you never had a problem standing down. It's just that most men have a problem stepping up. He said, that was my problem. He said, and that's how I lost you. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just one of those things. Why aren't we together now? Because he was in a hurry to do things that I was not ready to do. And he married somebody else. And now he's married to somebody else. And so, I mean, I just, you know, it's just like, you know, he, um, he, I mean, I just, I just think he just, he needed things that I was, I couldn't give him at the time, but he validated for me the, my ideal that <clears throat> the ideal of me, the idea of the ideal <laughs> of me that I have understood my whole life is that I'm not better than anybody, but nobody's better than me either. I understand that you know, my man is supposed to lead, love, protect, and provide for me, but he can't do that if he is intimidated by me. If he's scared of me, how am I going to be able to submit to his authority? How am I going to be able to, you know, if he's like the lady in Coming to America when she was telling Prince Akeem, whatever kind of music you like, if he's, if he's doing that, then how am I going to, as a woman, stand down and respect his authority? You know, it's just like, I, I don't, I don't understand that. And I don't understand how a man who knows who he is as a man could be concerned about what a woman has going on in her life 
as long as he knows her well enough to know that she understands his place in her, in his life. If she understands her place in his life, then being intimidated by her uh, success in her life is a complete and total waste of time because it could be a benefit to both of you. If she's making money and you're making money, that could help to add sustenance to the household so that you can have better everything. Instead of worrying about who's bringing this home and who's bringing that home, <clears throat> don't worry about her success because when you are one and you join together as husband and wife, her success is our success. And if you look at it that way, then you will never allow yourself to be intimidated by a woman and make that prevent you from stepping to a woman. I have gotten to a point where it's gotten so bad that I don't even like going out in my hometown. I tried to go out during homecoming weekend um, when everybody was in town. And, you know, it's like the grown and sexy party, you know, for the grown-ups. You know, no teeny boppers in, in the party. <clears throat> so I wouldn't have to worry about none of my nieces and nephews, little friends trying to hit on me. And so I went to the party and I, I walked in and I'm talking to this guy that I met when I walked in and we're standing there talking and then this guy this other guy walks up and says aren't you the judge and i'm like yeah and so you know and i'm turning around trying to keep talking to this guy and he was like oh okay i remember blood and i'm like you know what dude please just just go away because like after that my conversation with the guy who saw me as a woman because he didn't live in Hattiesburg so he didn't know I was a judge so it's like the conversation just completely changed and I was just like completely turned off by the conversation because I'm like I want I well, he was getting to know me as a woman without knowing what my job was I was just a woman who looked nice to him that he wanted to know better but once he knew that the guy may as well have just walked up to me and said hey Ain't you that convicted sex offender? Because that is the kind of stigma that is attached to a woman who is successful. The same kind of stigma that is attached to men once a woman finds out you're a convicted felon. So, I mean, if you don't want to be judged by the fact, by your past, then don't be uh, judging me by the fact that I take pride in my future and that I have ambition. Because that's not fair. If it's not fair to you, if it's not fair to the convicted felon, then it's not fair to the woman who is a, it is a success. I mean, just, it is what it is. Let every tub stand on its own bottom. Let every person be who they are without giving respect to their job and their status and their education. God has no respect of person, so we shouldn't have any respect of person. We should respect everybody equally. There are no big eyes and little U's in the eyes of God. So I don't see myself as a big eye. I'm just one of the eyes in a group of people. I'm just a citizen, just like everyone else. Because when the rubber hits the road, I don't want any special treatment from people who have a position to give me special treatment. I don't ask for it. I don't expect it. I want to be treated like everyone else. And that's what I want for men. I just want to be treated like everyone else. And I don't think that I'm asking too much. But the problem is, like I was saying, men associate money with power. And a lot of times it cuts both ways with that. Either they think that the woman wants to be, wants to have power with the man because of the fact that she has power with her money on her job or with things she can buy and things she can acquire. And they think that she either wants to be kept by a man and so he thinks that he can use his power to rule over her because he has the money he has the the, the power of the purse strings and so he can rule over her because she wants his money and so if she has her own money he sees that as taking his power away to rule over her but if she is a woman who is a woman walking in 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 the way of god then she's going to want a man who can sit in a position of authority not somebody who will want to tear down her strength but someone who will lovingly under lovingly harness her strength so that it can undergird him as he leads her through life now the flip side of that is other men think that women in power want to a woman with money and power want to have a boy toy so that they can have somebody that they can rule over and there are women who are like that just like there are men who associate money with power there are women who associate money with power 
And those people will try to get somebody who has nothing outside of them and say, if you don't do things the way that I want you to do, then I'm going to take away what I'm giving you, which is my money. And I mean, it's just like, why would you want to be with somebody who would do, who would treat you like that? I mean, you know, and it's just like, I I would never want to use my money to manipulate somebody. I don't. First of all, I ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I'm not a millionaire. I'm not even a thousandaire. But you know, I just you know, I got a, a six three, two hundred seventy pound six year old, sixteen year old. I'm six year old, sixteen year old. My son is sixteen. He's six three, two hundred and seventy pounds. So. I ain't got no money. I just got a son who wants to eat constantly and he don't like, you know, cheap food. He, you know, it's like it's not going to stick to his ribs. If I buy him something cheap, I got to give him something that's going to stick to his ribs and then he's going to eat and go to sleep so he won't ask me for nothing else. And then I can't, I, we don't eat out as much as we used to because he's hungry three hours later. And so I cook, I cook, I come home and I, I go to the little butcher shop and I get food and I cook for my son so that he can have food that's going to stick to his ribs. And then when he gets hungry three hours later, he can go in there and warm him up some leftovers because I I'm telling you that boy eats like two grown men I just I just can't but anyway um I don't I don't I really don't know how else to put this I mean it's just like I think that men make unfair presumptions with regard to women who are successful they presume that we're mean that we're diva ice princesses that we're man eaters or they presume that we are um looking for a boy toy that we can keep that we that we are independent and that being independent means that we're looking for somebody that we can cake i'm not look my son's name is kobe payton and if your name ain't kobe payton you can't get not one dime of my money unless we are married Unless we are sharing money in a household together, married, you ain't going to see not one part of my money. I'm not asking for yours, so don't ask for mine. Because that is one way to get me to tell you to lose my number. Ask me for some money. Because I'm not going to ask you to buy me nothing. Don't ask me to buy you nothing. You're a grown man. Buy yourself what you need. Um, Let me see. Is there anything else that I wanted to say about intimidation? Um... I just, I mean, the best way to put it is, you know, guys, y'all are just going to have to get over it or just leave successful women alone. You know, just don't step to her. If you know that you can't handle what she has going on in her life, then don't step to her. Just leave her alone and let the guy who can handle what she has going on, let him step to her. Because y'all, you know, because you just, you, you, you can't, and then you got to seek God. Because if you're scared to step to a woman because of what you think she got going on, then God is not giving you the authority that you need. So you need to go pray and submit yourself to God, and then he will give you the authority that you need in order to, um, to go and claim what you want. Because if a successful woman is the woman that you want, then go and get her. I mean, go and get her and, and do what you got to do. You know, it's just like you have to think about Boaz. Go read the story about Boaz and Ruth. You know, Boaz jumped through a lot of a, a lot of hoops to get Ruth, you know, and all she did was make herself available to him. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm only going to make myself available to a man. And if I make myself available to you and you don't take advantage of the opportunity that I give you when I make myself available to you, then that window of opportunity is going to be permanently closed to you. There will be no door. There will be no other access. Ain't no back door. Ain't no way to get in. You're done. I mean, it's just like I'm not going to... Um, I don't chase boys. I mean, my son is 16 now, but when he was 18 months old, he understood that when I said, come here, Kobe, that I meant what I, I was saying. And if I had to come and get him, it was going to be some problems. So if I don't have to chase after my own son, then I'm not chasing after anybody else's son. So if you want me or you want any other successful women, go get her. Just go get her. Cause I'm old school. That's not going to change. I want a James Evans man. You know, it's just like James Evans was the epitome of everything that a man is supposed to be. He is, he was a leader, a lover, protector, and provider. And people like, you know, but James Evans was broke, but he had the desire to take care of his family. He had the desire to give his family everything that they needed. And that's what I want in a man. I want somebody who has a desire to give me what I need and who can just let me be a woman at the end of the day nobody who's going to throw my job up in my face constantly and you know just make me suffer for the fact that I have amb ambition 
to be more and to have more. So that's all I'm going to say for today. Um, I guess I'll talk with y'all again on Sunday. I hope you enjoyed this PSA. Have a good week.